My name is Pete Corelli. I uh, spent almost 40 years in the United States Army. Retired in 2012 after being Vice Chief of Staff of the Army for four years. Combat uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, was very difficult. Many times uh, the results of, of that do not uh, produce themselves uh, un until after they come home. I returned to Fort Hood, Texas just before I retired. It was an opportunity for me to say goodbye uh, in uniform, um, to tour and see some of the things they were doing to treat traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. And at the end of the day, I was tired, but I had one final event. A young reporter came in, at least a young one compared to me, and uh, she sat down and she asked me one question and she began to cry. I said, what did I say to make you cry? And she said, you said nothing. But I, I asked for this assignment because I wanted to talk to you, because I hear you really, really care. She said, my husband is a Silver Star recipient. Uh, he got out of the Army three years ago. Uh, he had no s visible symptoms of post-traumatic stress or traumatic brain injury. And since that time, he has tried to commit suicide uh, and uh, shows all the symptoms of post-traumatic stress and my marriage is coming apart. Can you help me? It's not always at the time of the event or soon after the event. These things seem to be cumulative um, and, and create problems for people long after that. And, and I don't think this is anything new with this generation. I, I, I think this, is, this has been around forever. We just didn't admit it. But I think we've gone a long way in educating the leadership of, I know, the United States Army and all of DOD in understanding that these are real injuries uh, that need to be treated. You don't want to be labeled with having a disorder. We consider it honorable for people to get help with the visible wounds of war. Why wouldn't we consider it honorable to get help with the invisible wounds of war?